You're listening to the Impact Theory Podcast, your source of empowering ideas and actionable techniques from the world's highest achievers. Join host Tom Bilyeu, serial entrepreneur and co-founder of the billion-dollar brand Quest Nutrition, on a journey to unlock your potential and realize your vision of success. Welcome to Impact Theory. Indeed. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Relationship Theory. We come to you live from the house today. It is uh, December 27th. It is. And Christmas. we're still all Singing in full like- Christmassy mode. Get after it. There you go. All right. So today we are going to be um, offset. We're here in uh, our living room. We've got family here alive and around us. So if there's a little bit quiet. of extra noise, yeah, they're all like <laughs> church mice right about now trying to be quiet. Um, so yeah, we're going to dive in and I think you have a question for us to kick yeah. off. I hope you guys had an amazing holiday, by the way. Um, whatever it is that you celebrate, we hope that you had an amazing time with friends and loved ones and uh, now are ready to dive into relationship theory. Yes, let's do, let's do this. All right, so I want to give results from last week. Nice, the would um, you rather. The would you rather, yeah. Right, so last week, and um, I guess thumbs up, make sure that we, you guys can hear us okay. We didn't put mics on, yeah. but we figured it was all right. So thumbs up if you can hear us. Um, I heard about the World Carnivore Championship. Is that okay. what I said? Um, are you listening? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> so this is, uh, would you rather from last week? Okay, the question was, would you rather have your trust broken by your partner, but the aftermath makes your relationship stronger, or never have trust issues at all? So that was last week, and the results are in. It was actually 50-50 again. What is with that? But Michelle, shady old lady, knew that I'd be curious on like the men and the women ratio, and she actually says um, it's even camp. Wow. That's interesting. It's because her questions are brutal. Yeah, they are So brutal. it's like, I hate both. Yeah, yeah. they're great questions. Amazing. Uh, all right. So our first question of today. Oh, no, I need to, would you, would you rather, sorry, this week's would you rather. Would you rather take no time for self-care and your relationship suffers or take no time for, or take no time for self-care and your business suffers? Uh. So answer, drop in the comments. Maybe. So obviously they're both hateful. Um, Man, so I don't want to give a BS answer. The reality is it entirely depends on the spectrum of how much one suffers because there's no question that you Mm -hmm. suffered, our relationship suffered in the early days of our business, but I wouldn't change that. And it, we didn't get to a breaking point, which Mm -hmm. is very important to note, but like laying that groundwork, we, everything that we've achieved still sits on that bedrock and so to pretend like that wasn't necessary or that I regret it which I absolutely do not regret it I'm glad I listened to you I'm glad that you put your foot down but I'm also glad that you waited like six and a half years to say enough is enough Hmm. and I think that yeah I, I would do that again and so the truth is there's a season for everything. I wish I could remember the exact song lyrics, but there's a season for everything. And especially in the beginning when you're laying the groundwork or like when we first started Quest, it would, there was just mm. so all in that I think you have to know when to let one suffer and when to let the other suffer. And I think that it, it is almost universal that one will be underserved. I won't go so far as to say suffer, but one is gonna be underserved at all times. And so it's like mm. knowing how to walk that balance. Oh, I literally was going to say I'd rather business suffer, but you're absolutely right. Like we chose to know, like, look, this can affect our relationship and we have to work through it every day. But um... And now I've just done though what I hate when other people do, which is I didn't actually give an answer. Uh, so would oh, I, I thought you would I rather, rather, I would rather the business suffer. Oh, yeah. why you just flipped it on us? No, 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 I didn't. I said, you need to know when to do each. Mm. So, but I'm mm. saying because it drives me nuts when people won't make a binary choice. Uh, I will say that gun to my head, my mm. priority is relationship over everything. Mine is too, but I think I would say I'd rather relationship suffer because I feel like I can control how I act in those. Imagine though it's a permanent state. Oh yeah, then business for sure. Sorry. It is. Business. All right. Um, all right, so we've got a kickoff question. Guys, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and we'll start answering them. But we've got a kickoff question. This is from Lester Visaya. In the relationship, how do you guys go about balancing the essential needs for me time and we time to keep the relationship nourished and evolving? Do you guys pretend to be interested in what the person <laughs> is into? Do you con- or do you consciously schedule doing things on your own? 
So the reason why I love this question so much is we literally, we deal with selfish time, all, like we talk about yeah. it all the time. And it was on Christmas morning, I asked you, what's your selfish desire? Because we do this whether we're really busy at work and we have like a few hours or we do it on the weekend or we do it on vacation. Like the first thing we say to each other is, what is your selfish desire? Yeah, this is something, by the way, I highly encourage people to use yeah. in their relationship, especially if you're with a pleaser. So we're both pleasers. We want to make the other person happy. And so you end up doing this like weird like dance of whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. Oh, it's so annoying yeah. and nothing gets done. Nobody gets what they want. So we finally instituted a policy where you had to say your selfish desire. Now just saying what your selfish desire is doesn't mean that's what we're going to right. do. It just means, hey, we finally have clarity as to what everybody wants. And then we can decide, okay, what mm -hmm. is it that we actually want to do? Now that I know the truth of what you want, you know the truth of what I want. That's a good point, don't put an expectation to it. So just because you said it, it doesn't mean that you're gonna get to do it. Right. It just means we need to lay out all the cards on the table and- And it's your selfish desire. Right. It's the thing that you wanna do regardless of what the other person wants yeah. to do. And then once you know that, you can find a, sometimes it's a happy medium or sometimes it's like, oh wow, like that actually sounds kind of cool. So if mm. uh, we'll, we'll end yeah. up going down a rabbit hole. There it is, yeah. selfish but, but I remember when you first used the word, like for me, the word selfish had a very negative connotation. It's like, you never say that you're selfish. You never want to be selfish. My mom, um, growing up, like she was like the least selfish person in the world. So I always saw that word as such a negative. So if that word rubs you guys the wrong way, choose another word, say, you know, rejuvenating time or whatever. But selfish we use the word selfish. That, that sounded like <laughs> madness to me. I'm gonna be really honest with you. But yeah. we said so selfish. And so I asked him on Christmas morning, what do you selfishly want to do? And you said play video games and it was, there was something else. But every year you always say play the video games. And I admitted to you, which you never realized, that before I played video games and he said, oh, the selfish thing I want to do is play video games, like, I did get a bit, like, stung. Like, oh, because the one thing he wants to do doesn't involve me. Right. Um, and so, it again, you can't judge a partner, though, for saying the truth. So it wasn't like, oh, man, so you don't love me, you don't want to be with me. It's like, no, look, out of everything you do in this world, that's the one thing that you don't often get time to do, so that's your selfish. But now that we play video games, it's so cool, because when you said, I want to play video games, I was like, yeah, let's play some video games. So I felt included in that. Mm. But I think no matter what, even if you're like, I don't want to see you all day, or that's a bit aggressive, but if you're saying like, I want to go out and I want to do X, Y, and Z, and it doesn't involve you, like you can't hold that against your partner. You've got to make sure that like, this is just what they, they want to do. It has no effect on you. And it shouldn't have an effect on you emotionally on how you feel. That makes sense. A, yes. B, just to really keep this super tactical, the reason that being selfish, like, so the title of today's episode is how being selfish can actually improve your relationship. I, people get in these weird loops where they're not being honest with their partner about what they want. And I think people need to, in a relationship especially, you need to understand that having time for just you, total, regardless of what the other person wants, is is really important. And to people talk about losing themselves in a relationship, mm -hmm. this is one of the reasons that people lose themselves point. is they don't draw a boundary. They don't say as a couple, we actually value having time for each of us to do selfishly what we want to do. And because people don't carve out that time, you really do feel like you're getting lost. And so we definitely prioritize making sure that we spend time together. But like, I, I think a Saturday is, um, the way that we spend a Saturday is a very good example. So we wake up and your selfish desire in the morning is she likes to eat together. Now that, that just isn't a thing for me. I don't really think about that. Like I wake also because there's such a, usually a time gap between when we wake up, you're eating together is usually my second meal. Um, so, but that wouldn't make my radar, but I know that that's something that's important to her. So when she wakes up, we sit down, we have a meal together. And the reason that's a no brainer to me is I really do prioritize the relationship over everything. So if that's something that you need and it's not like, it's certainly not problematic for me. So cool, easy win. We do that. And then we take time to do something special together. Maybe it's watching a show. Maybe it's going somewhere. Maybe it's literally just sitting out together on the balcony and talking and hanging out. But like that becomes the number one priority for the day. Like we need a proximity mm -hmm. is huge. And that's something that you've taught me is that being together physically is very, very meaningful. So we spend time where we are the focus of each other's time. And like we make sure that we do that first. 
Now, a lot of times on a Saturday, because we've carved out time for it, we actually get, say, six, seven hours of just quality together time where we're, we sit outside together, we eat together, we watch a show together, whatever it is. A lot of together time. And then towards the evening, it's like, say, seven-ish o'clock, because we go to bed much later on a Saturday than we would during the week. Then it's like we click over into selfish time. So at that point, we'll start like, you might watch a show that I have no interest in watching. I might do a little more work or read or something like that. So doing that and knowing that, hey, later tonight, after we've really made sure that we prioritize that time together, I'm not going to feel like I've lost myself or I've burned out or I secretly want to be doing something else. It's like, I know that I've got that time where I can do whatever the hell I want. And it's not at all going to be influenced by what you want or by what you want me to do. I'm not going to be doing chores. Like that's the thing that like I find, I look at other people's lives and I just don't understand because their significant other has them doing like chores and stuff. So anyway, like carving out. But that's actually, time but to do I something. actually want to address that because that's actually really important that we've, um, developed over time so for me it was like hang on a minute I'm cleaning the house I'm doing all this work and you know like on the weekend you're messy and I really need you to be a part of um, like hey pick up after yourself do this do that and then we just realized that like now my what I find important of living in a tidy house and neat like I'm now sucking out that important time for you like you don't say it's important to you I do so why are you taking up your personal time to do what I want um, and then I actually realized that actually isn't fair. And so we broke that down into what is important to you, what is important to me, and then out of your selfish time, what is important that you want to address? Because if you want to play video games and I don't, we just go, okay, what does the day look like? And then when do we do those things? So if I choose on the weekend to tidy because I have a compulsion, then that's on me. Like, I used to pull you in and I used to feel like I can't believe he doesn't care. He's not doing it with me. But I think the important thing to remember is that's something that I want to do, not what you want to do. Yeah, I wish we could link out to stuff because that's what we call a collision of values. You're not right. I'm not wrong. Right. It's just we have different values. Yeah. But I want to go down that okay. rabbit hole. But I'm very logistical in a way. So I take your what you want, your selfish desires. I take my selfish desires and then I try to figure out what that day looks like. Um, but I don't rely on you to do it because I know that's just not where you're you don't think that far ahead in the day of like logistics and that's where i shine so i think just allocate someone that is good at doing that in the partnership and then lay out everything with no like don't be bashful though right like if all you want to do is put on headphones and listen to music and ignore your other half like you need to say that and you need to make sure that either of you don't take offense to the fact that you're not part of that one selfish thing and um, I think that's so important because people get so tied up and like, oh, does that mean you don't want to be with me? It's like, yeah, I do. And that might be something you want to do in that day, but it's not the one selfish thing. And I used to take offense and now I don't. Word. So anyway, okay. All right. On to the next question. If you guys have any questions, throw them in the comments below and we'll get to answering them. So next question. Um, all right. Daniel Bro. When you're feeling needy and wanting attention, how do you go about it? This is coming from someone who has a love language that is time. So first and foremost, you just have to tell the person. So this is where communication, I mean, look, every, every relationship where people have been together forever and they seem very happy and you ask them, what's the secret? They all have the same answer. So let's, let's none of us pretend that the answer isn't like patently obvious. It's communication. So telling the other person and communication is really, um, there's obligation on both sides. So you were talking a lot about it with selfish time. Obligation number one is to actually communicate what your selfish desire is but obligation number two is not to be offended when the other person wants to do something that doesn't include you, mm. right? So, and this goes back, like, just to put a pin in something, this goes back to the whole point of being in a relationship is making the other person feel, feel, not understand intellectually, but actually feel that they're your number one. So if I'm feeling like I'm your number one and you say to me, but I want to go do this, I want to go have a girl's day, I want to just have time to myself, whatever, I'm going to be like, yeah, like I, it won't trigger any insecurity in me whatsoever because you make me feel like you're number one. So that's important when I say all this, understand that you need to like, as a permanent state of being, make sure that your partner feels like you're number one. Mm -hmm. Then when it's like, hey, I just need some selfish time, the other person should very easily be able to say, I get it because I have that same thing. You're my number one, but I still want time for myself. I want to go do something that you don't want to do. Or quite frankly, if you're wired like me at all, like there are just times you don't want another human around you. You don't want someone talking. You don't have to think about anybody else. 
You want to be deep in your world on something and just like get totally into that And I used to universe. take that really personally, but now I don't. There's that shift of, and I think it's because you've made me feel like you're number one. And that takes time. That is like on a daily basis, monthly basis. You need to work on that person feeling like that because that's why, right? That I don't feel like, if you're like, I just want to like enclose, I don't want to talk to you or like I'll be talking really quickly and you'll be like not paying attention or just wanting to get in your zone. It's like, I don't yeah, it's so funny. Personally. People would not recognize this off camera because on camera I talk a lot and then off camera I'm like, <laughs> even the other day he came back and he looked at me and he's like, Oh, I said, what do you want to talk about? I was like, Oh, well, he goes, but just to let you know, you need to talk and I'm not talking. Cause you're like, I've had a really exhausting day and I can't, I don't want to think anymore. So I was like, well, I don't really want to talk to myself. And you're like, well, you're not, you're talking to me. I'm like, yeah, but if you're just staring at me. So I was like, yeah, I'm not in the mood. And so we just literally laid yeah. it all out on the table and it wasn't upsetting. You were just, I think it's because you were honest. Yeah, and I mean that, so bringing it back to Dan Bro's question, right. it's all about that communication. So you need to tell the person I'm feeling needy, which we do a lot, like yeah. admitting an insecurity, um, saying like, whoa, when you said that, I know it shouldn't, but like, this is how it makes me feel. Or hey, for whatever reason right now, I'm feeling the burn, I need some time with you. <clears throat> and if you're not abusive about that, and this is really a key, if you're not abusive about asking for something, meaning you're not like saying every hour, like, oh, I'm feeling needy, oh, I'm feeling needy. Like, let's see what you do with that, right? And if it's not like a big test, mm -hmm. and you're just like, every now and then when you're really feeling the burn, you say like, hey, look, I'm really feeling needy, I'd like to spend some time together. Like the vulnerability will be respected. Mm. In fact, if the vulnerability isn't respected, you have a problem in your relationship. And then if you're not being abusive about it and you only say that when it's like, okay, look, I've been really respectful about what you're doing, but I'm just going to be open and honest and feeling needy. I need some time together. If the other person doesn't reciprocate, you have a problem in your relationship. Doesn't mean they're not overcomeable. I'm just saying like if you said, hey, and we have this word called important, which it not like we made it up, but like we put a really concrete definition to it, which is basically if I say something's important, drop everything else and pay attention to that. Never be abusive. Like the number of times that we say important in a year is like three. Pro well, it's probably measured on two hands, but it's still like measured on hands. So it, it's that's really critical. When something is, say, a once a month kind of thing, like you would definitely expect the partner to be receptive to that. Yeah. So there it is. For sure. What's that next question? Um, all right. So next question. Uh, this is from last week from Corey Lee Stoffel. Stoffel. My husband and I are in a stressful, busy, demanding time in our lives. I am sick and he is in a career transition. We are both finding our metaphorical cups empty. We have had several small impasses where we both need to prioritize self-care rather than the needs of the relationship, household and family. How would you guys see that both partners are getting their self-care in? How would you deal with conflict when there are responsibilities that need to be met but both people are running on empty? That's a great question. Yeah, and I'm going to guess, and this is a guess, but I'm going to guess that when those responsibilities that need to be met those are almost certainly collisions of values. Unless we're talking about feeding the children and keeping them safe, like mm. it, it really is like, it's gonna come down to something that isn't objectively a need, almost certainly. So it's all about breaking down the priorities and being- For each other. Yes. Because priorities may not be the same. Well, so what I'm saying is you need to break down the priorities and agree on them. So regardless of- a of, unit. Yeah, like they, there's only so many hours in right. the day and so they're gonna have to go through and prioritize. In that priority, they're gonna find their collisions of values, right? So mm. for instance, if you were like, I'm running on empty and so I just need your help, your help tidying up the house, I'd be like, that's not a priority. That's something that you want mm. and I get it and I recognize it and let's find out where in the hierarchy it goes and there may be moments where I do that because like, it, what an opportunity to give you a gift to be like, I'm just gonna go bang this out and all that. But if I'm also running on empty, then it's like, we need to acknowledge, while that's a nice to have for you, it is absolutely not a need, right? Yeah. So it's like, Maslow has laid out the hierarchy of needs, right? So it's like, food, shelter, safety, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm, there, mm -hmm. there are needs, mm -hmm. and then there are wants, and then there are nice to haves, and it's like, people need to get really real. When your cup is empty, you've gotta get really real about what actually has to be done. Yeah. So for me, everything works backwards from the goal. I'm gonna guess people with kids, the kid becomes 
like making sure that they're safe and happy and well taken care of, that's priority number one. Okay, so if we know that's priority number one, everything works backwards from there. What do we need to do to make sure that the kids are well taken care of? And so you can put a plan of attack in place. I won't go through it now, but it's like, that, that to me is just like, there is such a logical sequence of things that you can do and let's like throw out the really horrible one. And if you one. agree on them, then there's no battle that, that has to be done before this. And then if you're running on empty things that don't have to be done, you can just say, look, it's not on our, our list. So I'd rather just sit down and relax versus do tidying, do this, do that. 100%. Sorry. I'm no, not at all. I was just going to give an example. Like for instance, if the clothes don't smell and you're feeling burned out, like don't wash them. <laughs> And I know like that would create a collision of values for you and I, right? Because you'd be like, well, they got to be washed. And I would say, if they don't smell, they don't have to be washed. Or like, I don't really care. I'll just put on something else that's old right. versus cleaning my nicer clothes. And yeah. And that actually was one thing we, we collided on when we first met because I had been brought up in a house. You always make your bed tidy, clean the plates as soon as you've eaten. Like this was just who Iron I... Iron your underwear. I'm literally, my mum irons the underwear. And so until I met him, I didn't realize it was crazy. Right. And he's like, but... And because I would put my values on you though, right? It's like the plates have to be clean. And you're like, but why? Like look at all the times I could be doing X, Y, and Z. And then I think you started to resent that I was holding you back and i don't mean it in that dramatic sense but it's like especially now like all these things like cleaning your plate picking up your socks like these are moments where you could be doing something a lot more productive like is it steve jobs that never used to choose change his t-shirt because he didn't want to waste he didn't the use time. the cognitive load so he changed his t-shirt he just had a whole yeah. bunch of the same thing but, uh, but anyway yeah, it's, it's taking the, the priorities of what you have and then everything else if i want to do it i can do it on my own but if i decide now i'm on empty and there's a list of things that i've decided where he's not going to help with but they're priorities for me and i'm on empty now it's up to me to say do i attack this or not and you know, obviously me being sick, that's been a big thing because I've been battling the like the things of like what I feel like I should do as a wife, what are the things I should do as a business partner, and then just what I want to do and then how tired and exhausted I am when I do all those things. So um, I think everyone, yeah, you need to kind of come together as a couple and say what are the priorities you need as a couple. And then past that, like we don't judge each other either. So, like, if I'm really tired because um, I've just been sick or whatever, like, I'll just say, babe, I can't today. Like, I'm really tired. Um, would you be able to help me with X, Y, and Z? And you'd be like, of course. And so you'll jump in. But sometimes it's just like you sit on one side of the bed, I sit on the other, I flick through the TV, and you're doing whatever you want. Hey guys, in 2018, this is where you're going to start hearing ads on our podcast. The reason that we're going to be doing ads is to help us continue producing amazing content and reinvest our earnings back into the company to grow even better and do even more. The types of brands that we're going to be working with will all have products that are going to improve your life in some way. We promise not to be abusive with this. So thank you guys so much for being a part of this community and to listening to this content and now for helping us do even better. Right, guys, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. We're answering live. Um, oh, we got uh, Chase's, oh, Chase's sister sisters, channel. Chanel? Chanel. Chanel, Chanel I'm Caprio guessing. Chanel Caprio in nice. the feed. Hey, Chanel. And our boy Jim Quick and in Jim the house. Qu yeah. What is up, Jim? I'm deadly curious as to whether he's in LA or back home with the family. But I hope you're well, Jim. It's good to see All you in right. the feed. Next All question. Right. Away. All right, this is from Yusuf Elazari. Is it okay if the partner decides to be less available due to professional life? If your partner. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's the short answer, right? So, whatever works for you guys. There's no objective, okay or not okay. There's only what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So, um, I'm a huge yeah. believer that you have no moral obligation to be in a relationship. And unless a relationship is making you feel better about your life by being in it, then you feel by not being in it, like don't be in it. So um, yeah, I think humans are social creatures. I don't think they necessarily need to be in romantic relationships. So do what works for you. If there's, uh, you've got a partner that's asking too big of a compromise of you that it no longer feels good, then don't be in that relationship. So um, yeah. That's... Yeah, I think people always try to change each other. And when I got with you, it was kind of the realization that you are ambitious. And so if I need um, more time with you, it's like, well, now I, I, I'm not going to try and change you. So if I need more time with you, I need to figure out, like, uh, is your ambition something I'm willing to um, 
sacrifice the more time with you over and if it's not then i need to assess should i be with you or not versus try and change you and make you mold like me yeah but i i'm gonna say and we'll we won't go down this rabbit hole now but just put a pin in this one uh you should be trying to change your partner at all times like we're all Ooh, shaping each other and to pretend that we're one. not is yes, utter madness right but the core of who you are for instance your ambition yeah now imagine i try to change that yeah that would be... You'd be like, why are you trying to change it? This is who I am. That would be you're, wasted you're energy setting, for sure. Right, you're setting yourself up for disaster. Yeah, so, so if, changing fundamental things about somebody exactly. is is risky. It's not necessarily um, off the table, just to be nice and controversial. Um, but it, it could be risky. And I told you from the jump, you could ask me to change pretty much anything. Don't ask me to change... I said give up. Don't ask yeah. me to give up my ambition. Um, because that's how I... One of the things that I most deeply value about myself and love and find lights me on fire and all that. So it like is such a, a bringer of joy in my life that that would just be a suicide mission for anybody that wants to be in a relationship mm -hmm. with me. Um, but that doesn't like when I think about how fundamentally we have shaped each other, it's absurd. Yeah. So yeah. and I've welcomed that and I think you've made me a better person. So, yeah, the thing is, we just always disclose everything the things we like the things we don't like and what we wish the other person yeah. would do more of or less of uh, so but i just mean like if i was to ask you to spend less time professionally and more time with me that then goes back to the collision of values of what we're trying to do as a couple what we're trying to do in the business and then just who you are fundamentally so i think from the start i would just accept, need to accept it instead of trying to change each other or figure ways around it yeah god i'm so interested in going down that rabbit hole but we'll stop for now for now all right we've got a would you rather segment all right guys um we say would you rather drop in the comments your answers we like to compare we like to discuss and here we go let's do it all right would you rather have a harsh disagreement in front of your entire family or in front of, of a group of strangers that's a good one. Ooh. hmm um, Ooh. I would rather have a harsh disagreement in front of strangers. Yeah, I think the reality is strangers. Yeah. Because you're really never going to see them again. That's so. exactly right. But to be honest, it's actually nice being held a little accountable because... Yeah, but we don't it's, argue it's like, like that. It's not like we are, so I'm no, not, we don't. I'm not worried about no, like, oh don't. God, I need like society to keep me from like being a psychopath. <laughs> Um, we have to argue and, and I think that it really comes down to like if we were really having a, a intense argument there there are things that like you would couch and not say if you're around your family I think that we would be able to be more honest around people that weren't going to be there so yeah that interesting be around later interesting that's so. a good answer alright guys All right, by the way somebody asked in the feed how long we've been together we've been Together for 17 and change years, we've been married for 15 and a half. Oh, I love that you say half. Got to. Got to have that half. <laughs> That's so cute. Um, all right. So would you rather answer with us, guys? Would you rather date around before settling down or marry your high school sweetheart? Date around, date around, date around. Yeah, I, I honestly, and to all of you that have made it work, you, you literally yeah. have my... Um, I stand in amazement. That's absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I think it should be illegal to marry your high school sweetheart. I just think... <laughs> because of how I was. Yeah. Like, the thought of that is so terrifying to me. Yeah. So... And I've said this story before, but, like, my ex-boyfriend wasn't very nice. And I don't think I... Because he was, like, my first main boyfriend. I didn't realize how much better it could get, right? You kind of, like, justify, like, oh, maybe that's what guys are like. Oh, maybe that's what... And so I just justified everything. And then when I first met you, like, literally, guys, I remember I had... Um, mental ticks of the things that I liked in a guy and it was confidence it was style um, it was like um, yes yeah, style I guess in clothes and cars and things like that um, talent and so when I'd met you you were confident you were talented and then I went to your car and it was like this big ass old Buick and I was like oh god no like I can't like it was just messy an old man's car and I was like wow this I just didn't feel like it was like me to date someone with you know, like that kind of style. Because back then, yes, I did judge. Um, and so we went on our first date. And literally, like, he opens the car door. And I was like, 
No guy has ever held the car door open for me in my life. So immediately I was like, who cares about the car? There was this thing that you gave me that I didn't realize was so meaningful to me. And it was that you were so chivalrous. And so I never would have got that if I dated my high school sweetheart. And so there's certain things that you almost don't realize are important or exist if you don't date around and experience those things. And then that was a long answer. But... Hey, there you go. And you, you still hold the door open for me, which is very sweet. It's very meaningful to me. Um, all right. Next, would you rather? Would you rather be forced to give up all the date nights for a year or be forced to give up all of your alone time for a year? Give up alone time. Give up date night. Wow, really? Yeah. Because we spend so much time I'm together. I'm like a little horrified. Yeah, I mean, but that's the huh. truth. Like, I I wow. couldn't not be alone. Like, that, that, that would... So, people have mental illness problems when they're put in, like, solitary confinement because of humans' need to interact. I would have a similar reaction to never being alone. Wow. Oh, my God. Like, I would literally be jumping out of my fucking skin. So it, it literally is not about like no, you no, or anything. I just didn't that is that purely answer. about That's the thought of not having alone time. Yeah. I oh dear God. Like I would jump out of my skin. Now I'm saying that from the perspective of hmm. we work together and we have all this other, like really what I will call quality time. It isn't like the romantic date night. And I am saying date night versus like, I'm still assuming we get time where it's just you and I. Oh no, I consider so, this is no, no, there's no you and so I. So it's, we're never just you and I? Yes. Oh, well, right. we are, but we're, let's say we're working. Or, you know, there's we, no. We, yeah, okay, so f in fairness, we couldn't not have, like if we couldn't have time you and now. I. No, 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 I think I've made my value system very clear on that one. Um, but if we couldn't have time, you and I, that just you and I, that yeah. would be a problem. But I think, and I keep saying this, but one thing I love about these questions, it really makes us define things mm. because for me, um, I don't mind being ignored by you in a lot of time when you're, you've got so many things going on and he'll come back from like this big speech or something. And I desperately want to ask like, Oh my God, how did it go? Tell me all about it. Tell me when you first got there, blah, blah. Like I'm like, Oh. And you're just coming, I know you so well, you don't want to talk about anything. Like, he wants to come home because you've just been talking for, to thousands of people for hours. So I just know that about you. And so that's one thing that I've adapted, that even though when you come home, I desperately want to talk to you, I just leave you alone. And it's like, sometimes I don't even ask you until like the very next day. Mm. So I did know that about you, that you um, like your alone time because you always put your Bose headphones on as well. But I didn't realize that'd be over dating. Or date night. I'm the complete opposite. Yes. That is a very true statement. Yeah. All right. So we're back to fan questions. Boom. All right. Boom. Um, this question comes from David Hutch. So while our communication is great, we all have things to work on. For us, the question is, when you have two people who are entrepreneurs, have their own vision and goals, you will both have bad days, which really just means one party's feeling down or has negative energy. What process or strategies do you use to be supportive of the other struggles, but also not let that negative vibe affect your positive one? That's our biggest struggle goal in the energy transfer. Energy transfer, I like that. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've got some techniques. So first of all, understanding that positive energy is more valued than negative energy is first and foremost. So for us, it's not okay to sit and wallow in negative energy. That doesn't mean that you're not gonna need some time there. We get it, but we're very um, aggressive about capping the amount of time that you spend in a negative place because A, it's shitty for you, it's not helping you at all, and B, it's definitely bad for the other person uh, we like to think of ourselves as independently codependent. So we, the energy transfer, I really like that, um, between us happens very rapidly. And then we also use a technique where you actually just ask the other person, do you just need me to listen or do you want me to solve your problem? And I'm afraid I'm the reason that we need that rule because I just want to solve all the problems. Um, and so, yeah, we'll just literally lead off with, okay, do you just need me to listen or do you actually want me to solve this? That was um, a massive thing for us. Cause I used to get so frustrated with you where it's like, I just want to, I want to, oh God, I want my feelings to be validated. So for you to say, yeah, but how do you change it almost doesn't then validate. 
It's interesting. Is that actually what you want? Let me tell you what the guy's perspective is. Yeah. And then you tell me if that's actually what you go right. through and we just use different words or if it's actually a different experience. Okay. So for me, I feel like um, emotions are like a, uh, this is a bad example, but like a Krebs cycle. So in biology, and I don't understand Krebs cycles well, so this is like my imagining of what it's like. It's like once it starts, it needs to complete the cycle. Okay, so that's how I think of an emotion. Emotion needs to complete a circle. So if you're not dealing with that emotion, so if it's anger or whatever, it just, it sits there in the background and it never, until you like, for me, like, vocalize it and say like, oh, fuck this, I can't believe this happened, and like, I get, ah, and now I've got it out, right? I've like walked myself through that whole cycle, and now I'm, I've flipped the negative energy into something positive, simply by talking about it, walking through it, stating like the things that are frustrating me, going through that, and then, because I'll get to that point where I'm like, okay, um, this, 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 Sorry. Annika, this, this, this is happening, all that, mm. by the way, she's like 10 feet over there. Um, all of this is happening, and then I flip it, and I get to the point where it's now, I'm, I realize, okay, I need to focus on something positive and get going. So because I've gone through that cycle, and I've gotten it out, I don't need, I literally don't even want you to interject. Mm. I just want to be able to vocalize it, go through it, communicate it, let it go, let it complete the cycle, and then I move on to positivity. So if I don't get a chance, and you identified that early, if I don't actually take the time to vocalize my frustration, I'll stay frustrated much longer than if I just walk myself through it out loud to you, but I'm actually not looking for feedback because I already have the mechanisms that are going to solve the problem, quote unquote. Mm. So I need that loop to complete as fast as possible. It isn't validation, don't need anything. Literally, absolute silence is actually the preferred thing. I don't need you to be like, oh wow, I totally get that. Yeah, that wouldn't serve me at all. And um, yeah, but so like, if I'm in a negative space and you're feeling like that, the one thing is we just know how to work with each other, right? It's like know the tool. So what I just went through, is that what you want? Or you actually want me to be like, Oh, I totally get that. Like, that really sucks. Oh, my well, God. Well, so when you go through what you go through, I think for me, it's just I need to be supportive. So I need to know the way you function. I need to know how you deal with things and what you're looking for from me. So, Well, I'm specifically trying to get to, I want to compare our internal needs. Yeah. So my internal need is I actually don't want feedback. Right. So because I know that about you. When, but what do you need in that moment? Right. If you're frustrated? No, yeah. when you're frustrated. Right, so I was going to get to that. So okay. for you, I know that I have to listen. I have to be very passive. I just need you to do that. Now, my ink, ink, uh, inkling is I really want to help. But I know that no matter what, you just want to process. And that's what's going to get you out of it. And ultimately, it's the results that you're trying to get. So what result are you trying to get? And then act accordingly, right? So for you, I know that's what you do. For me, I, I need to own how I'm feeling. I can't pretend. I can't go straight to fix it's okay I'm feeling like this I have a problem I'm you know um, and I just need you to listen and sometimes when you try to fix it I feel like you're trying to persuade me not to feel like that where it's like well hang on a minute then just do this and just do this and just do this and then it makes me feel yeah my my issue or my problem feels invalidated and so I think that that's probably one reason why I just want you to listen. So stay quiet. But would silence give you what you want? Initially, yes. Okay, but then? So initially it would be like, I just want you to listen. Or like, yes, to be honest, I do sometimes want you to say like, oh babe, that really sucks. Sometimes or all the time? Hmm. Probably all the time. Because at the beginning of the question, I actually thought, oh, maybe she secretly feels like I feel. And then no, as I was walking no, through, I no. thought, this is not what she wants. What no. she wants is me to be like, that asshole. I can't believe they no, did that. That's no, no, crazy. No. I used to, but now I just like, for instance, with my health, right? It's like, I'm not feeling well. You want to go, okay, so what did you do yesterday? How do we fix it today? What are the steps? And I literally, all I want is for you to say, come here, baby. Like, is there anything I can do for you? Because I just need that like validation of like, yeah, it feels shitty. Then you can go... 10 minutes later, all right, babe, so do you want, are you ready to sit down? Should we go through it? But sometimes you do it so like um, logistically, all right, how do you do this and what do you do this? And I know that that comes from a place of love from you, but it doesn't feel like it. So step one, give me a cuddle. Step two, ask me if I'm ready to fix a problem. And then step three, help me fix a problem. But there's a massive gap between cuddle and ask if you're when, ready to fix a problem. You think? Yes. 
and it's so interesting and this is values, right? So there is, I am definitely not right on this and you're definitely not wrong, but this is a, a question of like from my perspective, it is actually like funny is the real word I want to use that there needs to be a gap of time between like, I've heard you, I understand, I feel your pain. And now we need to like soak in that, like being understood, being felt, yeah. being heard before we can get to, yeah. and now let's solve the problem. Cause yeah. I remember once I thought, oh my God, I caught it in real time. Like I actually just listened and I didn't try to solve the problem. It was amazing. And, and then in my head I was like, okay, cool. We did that. Now let's solve the problem. <laughs> and, and you were like, you felt so good when I just listened and I really heard and I understood. And it, it really isn't just listening with you. That's my experience for sure. A hundred percent is that you want, you want your feelings validated, meaning you want me to express that I feel them too. And well, at least you understand them because I know you and I know that you wouldn't act or feel like that. So I don't need to go, yeah, I'm right there with you. I just need that support, that feeling of being supported. It's really interesting. It's like speaking a language that you don't understand, but like when a singer learns to sing in a foreign language, but they actually don't know what words they're saying. <laughs> yeah. That's how it feels. I don't have any internal understanding mm. of that need, which is why I forget so often. It is terrifying. But this is why we talk about it so much. Cause I think that's where couples really get stuck. Right. Where it's like, you have a way of doing it. You know that that works with you. You know, like this feels great. So everyone must be like that. And I don't think it's so conscious, but you do, th you do think that. Um, and so I think really laying out what are the steps, what are the priorities, like we do this about our emotions because otherwise in those moments where you're really feeling needy, right? Let's say I'm really feeling needy. I really do just want a cuddle right now. And you're acting in complete opposite because you're acting on how you would act. Now I just don't feel loved. I don't feel heard. And then I think that's where people then clash because like, yeah, but if he really loved me, he'd be there for me. Well, you just need to explain and really articulate what that means. Like, what are the steps that you want and how do you feel like you're there for me? Um, because you can't guess. And even if I tell you, as long as we've been together, I mean, he just said we've been together for, you know, over 17 years, we still were like, oh man, we just missed the mark there. All right. How do we get better? Oh, okay. So you need 30 minutes. Oh, you need a whole day. Like really explain to each other, like what that is without the judgment. And I can't say that enough. The judgment thing is such a big deal because even though I know that I seem crazy to you and you seem crazy to me, it's not, we use the word crazy lightly. It's not a, um, a dig at the other person. I think that's where people get, um, caught up. At least I can only speak for myself, but from a woman's perspective, I do, I did used to get caught up in the, the way you would act would be like, oh, he doesn't care about me. But the truth is, no, of course you care about me. You just don't act like that when you are in that situation or that position. Did we answer the guy's question? I don't even think we did. That would be terrifying. You sure? What process of strategies do you use to be supportive to the other, uh, to the other struggle? Yeah, I led also with not that. letting that negative vibe affect your positive one. Yeah. I led off with the, some tactics. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, next question. All right. Um, this question comes from Sarah Cunningham. I'm unbelievably empathetic and I find that sometimes I project other people's negative feelings onto myself and feel like I've done something wrong and get defensive. Any hints to not let myself get into that point? Yeah. So that's the self-awareness loop that you really need to train into yourself. So first of all, you obviously have enough awareness to know after the fact that it's helping happening. So now what you need to do is start working on getting that realization to happen much, much earlier. So, Hey, I'm having an emotion. It's a negative emotion. What is the emotion? So first identify it. So it's have emotion. What is the emotion? Then what's causing the emotion. So once you go through that cycle and you realize what's causing the emotion is actually somebody else's negative energy, then you can flip it. And the way that you flip it is using, I find, um, one focus. So what you choose to focus on, if you're focusing on something negative, then you're going to get that. So focus on something positive. You're going to start to feel that positive energy and then use the physical hooks to really change your physical state. So smiling is a great one, laughing out loud, um, changing your posture, doing what they call power posing. So something like this is gonna make you feel very different than doing you know, something like this. So <laughs> I was gonna lean in. <laughs> the human animal is absolutely amazing. Like the funny thing is there was like this 
anticipatory squirt of dopamine for you as my arm is around you, but then you didn't get the oxytocin of the cuddle, and so now there's like this disappointment loop happening. The humans are hilarious. So um, to that point, like really getting to understand the brain and the way it works is gonna help you out here. So like understanding what she just went through from a neurochemical standpoint mm -hmm. actually makes it so like I really can empathize with it because I know what that cycle is like of the setup, which is dopamine, which is actually anticipatory, which is why people have such a problem with cocaine because cocaine hits your um, dopamine center. So you get that rush of excitement of like, I'm going to have this, I'm going to get this, which is always better than actually having it, which is a less potent drug, which is like um, in this case, oxytocin, which is like that trust drug, which is not oxycontin. Uh, which is where some people go. And we're now at the depths, like I don't understand the drug part, I understand the neurochemistry, but not the drugs. So if I misspoke about what that drug is, forgive me. Um, but yeah, that's understanding that cycle is actually what you need to do to not let other people's emotions wash over you. Yeah, and when you've got a negative emotion, of Laugh out loud, so then put your arm back around her. That's actually a good Aww, tip. Oh, thank you, And I, I will take that advice. Thank you, Tammy. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say now. It was amazing though. Was we can amazing. all just like leap to, oh my God. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank when, you so that. when you're, um, if you've got a, a, a vibe that isn't happy or, you know, the one thing that I ask myself is like, okay, can I help you get out of that? Right? Like, what is he going through? And does this mean these are moments where he needs to talk? Does this mean the, are these moments that he actually needs to shut up and just get out of his way because he just needs to be alone? Are these moments where, like, sometimes I'll do something silly, like you even said, like, fake out loud. If we do it fake to... Fake laugh out loud. Fake laugh out, out loud, sorry. Um, if we do it to each other, we know that we can actually affect the chemicals in each other's minds. So if you're, like, if we've had a bit of a tiff or something and then we go, like, fake! like we force each other because mm. I'm not feeling like that like I've still got a bit of like residual like annoyance towards you but I know that I can change that and I know that like I'm being like if I feel like I'm being petty or like this is ridiculous but I still feel that negative like mm. I just go okay how do I snap myself out of it because it's important to snap yourself out of it and so I just go baby and then you look at me and go baby and then like within an instant that emotion is completely gone. Mm. We've kind of cheered each and other And you have up. to have like in sober moments said, hey, we're gonna mm. try this new technique of going baby. And the other person needs to reciprocate as a part of the agreement, yeah. the, the social contract, if you will. Yeah. Cause it's actually a very vulnerable moment to put yourself out there and do something silly. That's worked really well it for us. It has really. So like if we've had a bit of a tiff and we've gone off into different, into different rooms, and one of us decides, all right, I'm going to take the leap. I'm the one that's going to just walk back in. Not like, you don't have to go through, like, there's no apology. You just both kind of know that you just rubbed each other the wrong way. Someone has to take that leap. Now, imagine he's kind of still a little pissed with me, and I'm still a little pissed with you. And I walk in the room, and I'm like, baby, and you look at me. <laughs> like, then Not all of a effective. sudden, I'm crushed. I withdraw even more, yeah, yeah. more than I was before, and now we haven't resolved the problem. So yeah, you have to have that almost agreement before in your sober moments, where you, when I walk into my go baby, that you do the same, um, because then that really does help us. Yeah, and you're never gonna feel like it, by the way. That, that's the magic, and that's why it's always so impressive. Whoever the first person is that can get themselves there, yeah. um, that needs to be rewarded in the relationship. Yeah, and I, I do like a countdown in my head, so if I know he's in another room and I'm feeling kind of like, you know, pissed or whatever, it's like, all right, just walk in there and go, five, four, three, two, one. Ah. Mel Robbins, Mel do you Robbins. really do that? No, I didn't actually, I don't normally do from five, I do three. Okay. But yeah, Mel Robbins. What's up, Mel? Um, so I'll say like, five, four, three, two, one, baby! And like, don't think about it and just like kind of blurt it out. Um, and it really helps. We've, we've solved many a problems in doing that to yes. each other. Yes, yes, it changes the energy. So, and this is what I, I talk a lot about this on my AMAs, where it's like you really can manufacture an authentic emotion. Mm -hmm. And it's funny mm -hmm. how when you do that, all of a sudden you actually feel that, and then it's like, whoa, my energy has just totally changed. And if the other person reflects it back, then you get into this really positive loop. Yeah. Word. All right, probably have all time right. for one more. Yeah, last question. Um, this is from Steph and Annie. Yeah, Annie. Steph Annie. Steph Annie. How I'm long guessing you that's, guys... she spaced her name out to be a clever username. So her name is Stephanie, but okay. she spaced it out. How long will you guys that. typically work on a specific topic? Do you ever feel like you are beating a dead horse? How long will you work on something together? 
I think it depends on if we're getting results or not, right? Because it's like, there are still issues that we still battle and there, is, there are issues that we've overcome and then new issues have come up. So for us, it's never like, oh my God, this is beating a dead horse. It's like, all right, if this, this issue has not been resolved and we've tried X, Y, and Z, then clearly we haven't tried the right thing to get to the answer and the result that we need because we're so goal oriented that if it's like, look, this is a problem in our marriage or this is a problem in our relationship, you have to fix it because if you don't, it will always be there. And I think that that will just like grind on your relationship. So it's like, okay, we may have been trying to battle this issue for like the last year. What are the tactics we've used? And clearly we haven't come up with the right tactic because we have to get to a resolution. Put, just putting things, what is it? What? Sweeping things Sweet, under thank the rug. You. Sweeping things under the rug. Um, it, it never result, like it never works. Um, it always ends up being like this one little thing in our relationship that will come up. And the sad thing is sometimes it comes up like when you don't want it to, right? Like on a vacation. And so you have to keep figuring it out, change the tactic. And part of what we do is like, at least for me, I get excited in figuring it out. So if we've, we've tried a new tactic and it's worked, like even after the argument or the, um, whatever the, the tiff that we've gone through, I will always always say like oh well done babe you did really well there and it's like did you notice that i changed this because normally i do this because i think you do want that pat on the back as well right if you've been trying something for a while mm. it's like wow i really noticed that you changed that and that you normally would have done this so thank you for doing that because that really helped me get to this place and just kind of break it down but i think that yeah no problem should really be swept under the rug what do you think no, I nailed it. That was a great explanation. So there's no sort of set answer, but if people were goal oriented, like that, that would change everything. And so that's what we look at. Did we get the result we wanted? Yes or no. And if you got the result that you wanted, you did great. And if you mm -hmm. didn't, then you have to change something. So that's been a real lifesaver for us. A lot of times is like when it's like, well, I did what you said or whatever. And then it's like, but did it work? Because if it didn't work, mm -hmm. then we need to change something. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I get that I said it and I thought that it was gonna work and that was my best guess, mm -hmm. and, but it didn't work. And so now let's address the fact that it didn't work, switch something up. And so always having that sort of higher authority to go to of did, it, did we actually mm -hmm. move towards our goal, yes or no? Like that's, that's huge. Yeah, right. and just one thing to also add, timing is everything. Because there are things that we wanna work on in our relationship and it's like, you don't do it in certain moments, right? It's like, it may not work if you're in the middle of like a happy picnic and you wanna resolve an issue. It's like, this may not feel like the right time. So I think um, really getting on the same page about when you address things and when you address problems, I actually think makes a big difference as well. Yeah, timing is everything, you're absolutely right. Everything. All cool. right, so that's it, everybody. That's it, thanks guys for joining us. This was a lot of fun. As always, thank you for being in the comments. I really like being able to see them go through um, so I'd really like to find a way to blow IG that up story. or something. I don't know. Not IG that, story. But, IG hey. live. Sorry. I go to IG story. All right, right, guys. Thank you so <laughs> much. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Enjoy your holidays. Yeah. And I don't think we'll see you again until after the new year. So happy new year. Have a great time. Be happy sure to new check new out that content. Happy we put Christmas. out a bunch of year end content. Check oh, it out. That was exciting. It's amazing. Year We've got of a impact. Year of impact. And we've got the uh, resolution reality checklist you can download on the website. So head over there to impacttheory.com. All right, guys, until next time, be legendary. Take care. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. And if this content is delivering value to you, please go to iTunes, go to Stitcher, rate and review us. That helps us build this community. And that is what we are all about right now, building this community as big as we can to help as many people as we can deliver as much value as possible. And you guys rating and reviewing really helps with that. All right, guys, thank you again so much. And until next time, my friends, be legendary. Take care.